All right, hi everyone, and welcome to this talk, uh, Enter the Matrix. My name is uh, Brendan Olivier. I'm a software engineer at Element and also a core team member at the Matrix Data Foundation. Uh, we'll get more into what those are a bit later in the talk. In the talk. Uh, I'm also a core committer on Synapse, which is the reference matrix implementation, which is what we're going to install later in this um, in this talk. Uh, and you can see at the bottom of the slide my contact details if you need to reach out to me after the after the talk. Um, so I've been talking about what uh, in this first uh, minute of uh, a presentation. I've been talking about matrix matrix on servers uh, and so on. Um, but there's probably people uh, among you who don't know what matrix is. Uh, there's something we usually like to do at physical conferences, which is a show of hand on who's um, already heard about matrix, who's using matrix, who doesn't know matrix, but still uses it, but uses it anyway. Um, and uh, that's kind of gives us an idea of whether we can uh, skip the boring part of the, of the presentation. Uh, obviously, for uh, obvious reasons, we can do that here. So I'm um, just going to go ahead and explain to you uh, briefly what is Matrix. Uh, so Matrix is an open network for secure, decentralized, and real-time communications um, that can be used for interoperable, interoperable chats, um, so between uh, different clients, different servers, um, sometimes different uh, different chat platforms entirely. Um, we'll get a bit more in, on that later. Uh, it can also be used for VoIP, for virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, there's um, an, a nice uh, demo that was done at first time a few two years ago um, about about that. And it can also be used for um, for IoT. And this, um, this platform has a mission, this network has a mission, it's to create a global, decentralized, encrypted communication network that provides an open platform for real-time communication. Um, and to, and to, to fulfill that mission, uh, that goal, to, 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 um, to work towards that, uh, to work in that mission, um, that network, which is Matrix, is uh, defined by an open spec, which ha which comes with a bunch of inter very interesting features. Uh, you've got group messaging and one-to-one -one and one -to -one messaging. Uh, you've got end-to-end -end encryption um, using uh, a library called OM that implements the uh, double ratchet, um, uh, like, well, signals double ratchet. Um, mechanics. Uh, you've got uh, VoIP uh, signaling for WebRTC. Uh, you've got push notifications, search, unread counts, content repository for media, files, etc. Account data to store uh, basically random uh, user data. Uh, and <clears throat> the most important of all, I think, is decentralized conversation history because in Matrix, no single party owns your conversations. All the conversations are shared of all participants. What that means is if you're in a matrix room, uh, which is a, a chat room on matrix, uh, no, <clears throat> uh, that room doesn't belong to one server, like the server who created it or the server uh, of the admin of the room. Um, it means that the, the, the room is kind of a decentralized entity and all of its uh, history is shared with all of the all of the servers participating in that room. <clears throat> um, so all of those features are offered in well in four major APIs. Uh, you've got the client server API, ser the server to server API, which we also call the federation API. You've got the the application service API that's used to create bridges or advanced boats. You've got the identity server API as well, which is uh, which allows you to create servers that can act as address books for email addresses or phone numbers that are associated to uh, accounts so that you don't you can search someone with their email address for example um, it's it all fits into that kind of distributed architecture uh, which you can see here uh, and so to, um, so you can see for example the the identity servers uh, which are, which are the one implementing the the identity service API, which I was talking about. You've got the application servers, which are bridges to other platforms or um, more advanced boats or 
stuff like that. Uh, and then you've got basically seven clients, uh, which are the which so each client talks to the servers with the client server API, and each um, server talk to other server uh, with the federation API or server to server API. So Matrix is very much for now uh, on the <clears throat> on the client server architecture uh, with federated servers. Um, but we're also working uh, on peer-to-peer -peer matrix so that you you remove the need for for servers entirely. Uh, the the client service API, let's uh, client server API uh, is um, like basic like all matrix APIs are just JSON over HTTP, uh, and so sending a message in in matrix is actually very simple. Um, you can do that with just a simple curl command. Uh, with um, so you can see here you provide an access token that's provided at login or registration. Uh, you just and you just send the uh, the content of your mes of your message. So that's a text that says hello, and you send that to your server uh, into a room, which is that decentralized entity that I was talking about, uh, and you give it a type. So basically, an event well timeline the timeline of a room in Matrix is organized by well, in events uh, which uh, which have types uh, and well, each event is uh, a blob of JSON uh, with a type and content basically, uh, and it returns uh, an event ID. And so what I've shown here is how to send text message, but Matrix can do much more than that. Uh, and I mentioned I IoT before. So for example, if you wanted to control a view light, uh, you could send something looking like that. Uh, so that kind of event is not um, is not mentioned in the spec, is not described in the in the matrix spec, but it is um, <clears throat> but it is also something you can send because mat matrix just accepts arbitrary events that you can define and that and process as you want basically. Uh, so that's basically something different, uh, very similar to the pre to the previous example, uh, except you're going to have an, another type uh, which is so org.matrix.midi. Uh, and you're going to give it um, a very specific content, and it's all, it's still going to return uh, the same kind of uh, a payload, uh, the, the same kind of response with an event ID uh, in it. Um, in terms of the other APIs, so they're all very similar in that they're also they're all HTTP, well, JSON over HTTP or JSON over HTTPS uh, generally. Um, so you've got the server to server API that synchronizes messages and a room state between servers uh, in real time. Uh, and so that also allows them to uh, retrieve history uh, from each other and query a bunch of things uh, from each other. So that's basically the, the API that allows servers to communicate between each other. Um, you've, and you've also got the, the application services API, which is a kind of privileged version of the client server API uh, and can um, so, for example, they can uh, puppet uh, exist. Uh, they can puppet uh, some users. They can uh, create virtual users. So, so that if you're in a room that is, for example, bridged to IRC, uh, you're going to see other IRC people as if they were matrix matrix users. Uh, that gives you a bit of uh, of a peek into the matrix, the general matrix ecosystem. Um, which is which is pretty pretty wide and pretty and very interesting uh, to, to to look into. Um, so when you look at uh, how how matrix works in general, from uh, in terms of uh, the interactions between clients and servers, and how you can build that, and what you've got uh, in the in the whole ecosystem, uh, you've got a bunch of a bunch of servers. Uh, so you can see here. Um, uh, Synapse and uh, Dendrite. So Synapse is the matrix server we're going to install uh, a bit later um, in uh, in this talk. And Dendrite, uh, Dendrite is uh, an, uh, another uh, kind of a second a second generation um, <coughs> uh, home server for matrix uh, that is being uh, that is still uh, still on the development. And you've got all the app services and bridges. So that's very much the server side. Uh, on the client side, you've got some well, a lot of a lot of libraries for 
um, for for Android, for iOS, for JavaScript. Uh, so that's those are the ones the foundation maintains. But you've got a whole lot more uh, on the on the community side, um, and you've got a lot of uh, and so you've got and so you can use that to build the clients. Um, for example, Element, which is kind of the uh, one of the flagship clients for 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 Matrix. Um, but uh, you've got also a whole lot of um, of, uh, of other clients. You've got uh, Quaternion and Nico in Qt and C++. Uh, you've got uh, Fractal, uh, which is uh, under the umbrella of the GNOME project, which is and it's and it's written in Rust. Uh, you've got Thunderbird currently working on an integration of Matrix into Thunderbird. Gumux, which is a um, TUI client uh, written in Go, and Fluffy Chat, which, which is a very very nice looking uh, client written with Flutter. Uh, and of course, and so to kind of harmonize all of that, uh, those the client side and the server side, you've got uh, the specification. In this case, the client server API. Though in case of application services, it's also uh, the application service API on top of that. Um, so you've got clients available for on every platform, um, and so you can see you can uh, see that on this uh, by clicking on on this. Um, on this link, you've got a, a whole lot of, um, of very interesting clients for uh, for a lot of platforms, uh, very good looking as well. Um, and if you want to build your own, you can use uh, you can use one of the many SDK. So uh, official. So when I say officially, it's uh, as the Matrix .org Foundation. We maintain. Four of them: uh, JavaScript one, uh, React one, an iOS one, and an Android one. The community has built uh, a whole lot of other um, <clears throat> of other SDKs for other platforms. So you've got one in Go, in Python, Java, Ruby, uh, Rust. You've even got one for the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, one of our community member uh, built um, a, a, a client, a Matrix client for the Nintendo 3DS. Which works pretty well, and um, and and made an SDK out of it. Uh, you can so you can find find them uh, by going through this link. I'll uh, send the send the slides through um, uh, through the the conference's website, uh, so you can download them and check out and check it out yourself. Um, in terms of home servers, on the other side of the spec, uh, in a way, uh, you've got uh, two official, as in maintained by. The community, the Matrix Data Foundation. Uh, we've got Synapse, we've got Dendrite, and we've got a few, a few ones um, maintained by uh, community members. So Conduit, which is written in Rust, Construct in C++, and you've got um, a few, a, a few more. <clears throat> in terms of the global status of the community, uh, so uh, as of right now, we've got about um, a bit under 19 uh, million visible uh, accounts on the. Uh, on, on, on Matrix, uh, sending uh, sending a bit of a five million messages messages per day uh, across over over four million chat rooms, um, and so uh, and they're all um, distributed over forty five uh, thousand servers approximately, um, and yeah, a lot of a lot of bandwidth, um, a lot of um, uh, and a lot of projects building on Matrix, and also even companies building on uh, on Matrix, uh, and uh, and governments uh, using that as well. Uh, currently, the French government is uh, deploying a Matrix-based solution, uh, as well as the German government and um, and and uh, and others that are uh, kind of more in the in the building uh, in the conception phase. Right, so now that we've gone through that whole chunk of information, uh, let's install the home server. But wait, what's a home server? Uh, so that you, you've heard me use that term uh, a bit before. We're going to explain. Uh, I'm going to explain now what it is, uh, like what is what it concretely is. Um, in, Ma in Matrix, you've got roughly um, three types of servers. Uh, you've got an identity server. Uh, which is, um, uh, as I said, kind of address book of email addresses and phone numbers associated with matrix accounts. You've got application services, um, and uh, which are bridges and adv more advanced bots. Um, and you've got home servers. Um, a home server is basically going to be the home of a matrix account. Um, it's going to implement the, both the, the client server API and the federation API. And that means that um, a client that connects to 
uh, well, clients and both clients and servers are going to connect to a home server using their respective APIs to send and receive messages. Um, also, I just wanted to um, uh, mind shed a bit here. Uh, when I say it's the home of the matrix account, that's how it currently is. And we're also working on portable uh, identities on, on matrix so that uh, your, your home server, the home server you're uh, sign up with uh, doesn't have to be the only home server you can uh, you can you you can use your account on it, it doesn't so that it doesn't have to be the only home of your of your matrix account. <clears throat> um, so the home server we're going to implement again <laughs> is um, well wait, sorry we're going to install uh, is is Synapse. It's the it's a reference implementation. It's open source on, Git, uh, on GitHub under the matrix-org organization uh, just on the Synapse repo. Um, and the plan uh, will be for us to install Synapse using the official Arch Linux repo, uh, configure Synapse, and also co install and configure a reverse proxy uh, at the end of that. So let's do this. Uh, so let me switch to my terminal, uh, get that um, a bit bigger, um, and let's just start with uh, sudo pacman as matrix Synapse. So uh, we're going to install. It's going to install a, a bunch of uh, dependencies uh, as well, um, and we're just going to wait for this to um, to finish. Right. So it's finished, and it's done a, 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 a bunch of and it's told us a bunch of things. So um, currently, so the current package on on Arch Linux. Um, which, by the way, is not maintained by us, but uh, by uh, the very nice Arch Linux community. Uh, well, the, the very nice Arch Linux uh, trusted users. Um, <clears throat> and thank you very much for providing that package. Um, the, so that package doesn't generate uh, a configuration uh, just on the fly. Uh, so what it, uh, what it does is tell, is tell us uh, that we're going to need to do that. So it first, first, needs, uh, first tells us to go to that directory. Uh, the slight issue is we can't access it as a primary. So I'm just going to, uh, uh, to schmode it very temporarily so that, um, so that we can access it to, um, to, to, to do what it asks us to do. And so we're going to so if we, if we so we're going to first look at what that uh, command is. Um, so the first so on the first line we we see that we're using Python. So Synapse is re didn't really mention it, but Synapse is written in Python um, uh, using the using Twisted as its uh, well using the Twisted framework for um, for networking and also a bit of a uh, of a synchronous. But we're slowly migrating to, and I think we've almost entirely migrated to uh, async away to the async io, uh, async io um, uh, Python core library, um, and so we're going to use Python to to start Synapse, and we're going to give it um, a few a few more things. Uh, the first one is we're going to tell it to generate the config uh, because we don't have a configuration yet, so we, that's what we want to generate it. Uh, we're going to give it a config path. Uh, we're going to tell it that yes, we're we're happy to uh, to send it um, to send it um, use usage stats, uh, which are very um, very well, which are completely anonymized. Uh, it's just so the the point of that is uh, is like it's not going to um, your home server is not going to send us. For example, the complete list of members or whatever. It's just going to send us some very um, broad aggregated statistics so that uh, we can make some uh, decisions when planning the development of Synapse. Uh, for example, uh, it's going to tell us your Python version and your database version so that we can know, um, for example, well, uh, Python 3.5 got, uh, uh, well, reached its end of life uh, last, last, well, well, last month. Um, and um, and so we're looking we're looking at those graphs to see how much home servers in the wild are using um, Python 3.5, so that we can decide when we can drop uh, support for it. 
Um, so that's an example of on how we use the, the stats. Um, and we're going to use and we're going to provide it with a server name. So the set so in matrix, um, all of the everything has an ID. Uh, so the user has an ID, a room has an ID, um, a group has an ID, uh, an event has an ID. Um, and in most of those IDs, you're going to use uh, for different reasons. You're going to use uh, the server name, uh, which is going to be you know, the identifier of your server. Um, so, for example, if my server name is example.com, uh, so sorry, it has to be a domain name, um, a valid domain name. So, if my server name is example.com, for example, my user IDs are going to look like at uh, Brandon uh, on example.com. So, they're going to, to look a bit like that. Um, so we're going to so it it has to be a, a server name uh, well it has to be a domain name that you own um, doesn't have to be we'll see a bit later that it doesn't have to be the, the name of the the domain name where you're hosting your home server um, so we're first going to cd into there uh, and then we're just going to so I'm just going to open this very quickly open edit very quickly to edit that. And we're going to um, and we're going to change that into um, into my domain name uh, the domain name that I've got for this demo, which is archconf2020-demo.wv.bzh. Um, and we're just going to uh, and we're just going to to, to run that in our terminal. Uh, Tidex is very nicely asking me if I'm happy to run a sudo command. Yes, I am. And Let's do this, and we can see, and it's telling us everything that's everything it's done, it, it's been doing, um, and so the main config file, the one we're going to to look into, is um, is Hamza, is called hamserver.yaml. So let's uh, let's have a look here. Ah, that's right. So. Uh, we can see that it's already uh, pre-filled a bunch of a bunch of things. Um, so the server name uh, was pre-filled from the command line arguments. Uh, all of the all of the path uh, and files and uh, and all that are um, pre-filled with the current path where uh, when you're running the command, which is why we see it into um, into <coughs> uh, into. Uh, into varlib synapse. Um, so we're going to, sorry, I'm getting my notes here so that I, I don't overlook anything. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do uh, and that we're going to talk about is uh, is enable registration, uh, which is right here. So by default, registration is disabled uh, on synapse uh, when you install it. That is because that is basically for moderation purposes. We've got um, in the past we've we've seen a lot of spam from uh, big public servers uh, on Matrix, and uh, and we've seen people just basically crawling every Matrix server they could see uh, to 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 see if they had registration open and if they could create an account to spam uh, other rooms. So. Just so if you're setting up your just a private server for you and your friends or you and your family, you don't need to enable it, or you can just enable it just for the time so uh, everyone can create their accounts. Um, <clears throat> but uh, if you, yeah, my my point is really if you want to enable it, uh, just uh, make sure it's uh, make sure it's actually what you want to do. Uh, so we're going to enable it for this demo just so we can test our home server later. Um, we're also going to um, so we're also going to look at the database. And actually, I've got a slide on that. Um, Synapse will use an SQLI database uh, because it's the easiest to to, to set up, um, and basically the the easiest if you just want to set up Synapse and uh, just start it up and see see how it goes. Uh, we recommend Postgres for production, though, uh, for performance uh, for performance concerns. Um, and in the future, we're going we're even going to uh, deprecate uh, 
SQLite for Federation. So that means that you won't be that in the future you won't be able to use Federation. Uh, well, you might not be able to use Federation if you've got if your server is using SQLite uh, because we're getting a lot of um, <coughs> of support requests because and performance issue uh, reports because uh, of people using SQLite. Um, there's and there's some dog hair if you if you need it to uh, set up uh, to set up Postgres. Um, so we're not going to to change that right now just because we we want a quick and easy config. And I think that's uh, about everything we needed to do. Um, just um, just very quick um, uh, very quick um, uh, notes on the on the log config. Um, the package that you install provides a, a file called log config log underscore config uh, which is not really which is a bit outdated and not really usable um, with um, with every like synapse. Uh, by default, when you run the generate config uh, command, synapse will uh, automatically generate its own um, logging configuration. Uh, so that's uh, which is so the the file in which you configure how you want Synapse to log. Um, by default, it's going to to just log in this in your current directory. Um, well, in the directory you were when you created that doc, uh, that uh, sorry that um, that configuration file, um, and uh, you can obviously obviously change that and and define a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, those are uh, this is a standards. Uh, Python uh, logging configuration, so feel free to, to, to look it up if you want to, to see a bit more on, 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 how, on how to configure it. Um, <clears throat> right, so uh, another, so last but not least, uh, so we, we're just going to, so first we're going to start Synapse. And it started correctly. It's giving us a, a bit of a warning, but that's more of a, uh, not really advanced, but not something I have time to to, to touch on in this in this presentation. So Synapse is uh, Synapse is running. Uh, it's running on. Um, it's running currently. Let me just go back up here. It's it's running on uh, one listener right now, which is on a, which is a local host listener on port um, <coughs> eighty oh eight uh, with just pure uh, pure HTTP. Um, the um, the reason it's just it's just on um, it's just running on on, on local host is because Synapse uh, well the whole the whole of Matrix now requires um, requires TLS for Federation um, <clears throat> and uh, and so up to up till uh, Matrix 1.0 in June 2019. Uh, we were using pers a protocol perspectives to validate TLS and federation, uh, which was um, uh, which was a project that allowed you to say um, allowed the server to say if that many servers trust that uh, server certificates, uh, I'm also going to trust it. Um, from starting from Matrix 1.0, uh, we now require a valid TLS certificate. Um, and um, and well, uh, I a certificate uh, validated by uh, an author um, uh, certific uh, certification authority such as Let's Let's Encrypt, um, and um, and so you usually want to do that with a reverse proxy. Um, just as a quick parenthesis here, uh, Synapse does have ACME support, and it actually does have the con the configuration to. Uh, to to provide um, if I can if I can find it yeah it even has uh, the configuration yeah here it is to to serve uh, HTTPS itself with uh, with the TLS uh, certificate and a TLS key um, <clears throat> however you uh, so and um, and it also has built-in ACME support. Uh, which is using TLS's txacme library. Um, the issue with that is that this, that library, as of right now, only supports uh, Acme v1, so the v1 version of, of the Acme protocol, which is currently being turned off by Let's Encrypt. Uh, I think it's only available uh, currently for 
for existing domains on existing accounts. Um, there is some work in progress on Twisted side to support Acme V2, but the progress is, is, is slow. Uh, Twisted is a non-profit organization uh, powered by volunteers who might not have uh, the time to, to, to work on that. Um, so currently we, we still have all Acme, uh, so Synapse still has Acme support, uh, but we don't recommend using it for new servers because it's not going to work. Uh, instead, we um, we sug we suggest we advise using a reverse proxy, uh, which would reverse proxy the the local host listener that I showed uh, that I showed you before. Uh, on this demo, I'm using Caddy because I'm familiar with it and it's uh, and it's got automatic TLS. So, um, but other the, other options definitely work. Um, so, uh, you um, on here you've got a link to one of our Docs uh, on how to use um, a reverse proxy with Synapse. Um, so, and you've got a, a whole lot of examples on how to use it with Apache, um, HA proxy, and Ginx, and so on. <clears throat> um, so, we're going to use Caddy2, uh, and you can see, I'm going to zoom a bit. Um, so, you can see that on here, that every, every single config example has two, two hosts. Uh, the reason for that is because um, we're differentiating the client port on which we're going to expose that we're going to expose to clients, which usually is 443, uh, so that clients can just connect to their home servers uh, like any um, like any <coughs> HTTP API, um, and we've got also got the HTTP the um, federation ports. Uh, which is by default on 48 uh, on 8448, and we'll see a bit later uh, how we can um, how we can change that. Um, so, oops, sorry, wrong terminal. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, so, on on these bugs, I've already installed Caddy. Uh, so, I'm just going to um, to change the config file, which is currently just hello world. I've already kind of prepared that configuration. Um, for now, we're still going, we're just going to use the same domain name for both because we're not doing any kind of delegation. Um, and we and so just that domain and that domain on 40 on 8448. And because we've got the doc uh, handy, we can just reverse, uh, we can just copy that. Um, and and we're going to restart Caddy. Hopefully everything is going good. Yeah, it, it feels it seems like it. And now if I go to my um, domain archconf twenty twenty. Demo, and I go into matrix. I should have so right. So no, I think I think the one I'm looking for is yeah, it's this one. Um, so it works. Synapse is running. Um, so yeah, we've installed. So we've installed. Uh, we've installed matrix, and we can well, we've installed a home server. We've installed Synapse, and we can use uh, and we can now uh, use. Um, uh, any matrix client to connect to it. Um, so I, I was planning to demo that uh, uh, to demo that uh, with an actual client, but I, I'm kind of running out of time. So uh, let's see very quickly what we can do uh, to to go a bit further in our setup. Um, so Synapse has uh, something uh, it calls workers to that that allows big servers to, to scale uh, horizontally. Um, the, the reason behind that architecture is that Synapse is written in Python, and therefore, um, very roughly, one process equals one CPU core. Um, the, that's sometimes, uh, the, the, resu the result of that is that sometimes Synapse is, gets you know, CPU bound, uh, and is a bit starving in terms of CPU. And so we and so workers are going to be just uh, sub well processes, different processes that use different a dif a dif a different 
CPU core, and that's going to handle part of the main processor's workload. And you do the, and so they're, they're, communicate, they're communicating uh, between each other through Redis, and, um, and, being, and each request is being routed by uh, reverse proxy, basically. Uh, a good example on the usefulness of workers is syncing. So in Matrix, you, a client uh, receives messages uh, by by syncing, uh, so it's uh, well. What we call syncing is a, a long pole on an endpoint called slash sync, um, and um, and so that's uh, that's how it's it's going to get new messages, new data, uh, new invites, new rooms, and and all that. Uh, and that process can be a bit a bit heavy because it's dealing with a lot of events uh, and a lot of potentially a lot of users. So it's uh, kind of a perfect example of something you can just offload to. Uh, another process um, with with workers and well synchrotrons as as we uh, call it as we call them. Um, another um, uh, completely different uh, nice thing about uh, that you could do with your with your uh, server is using delegation. Uh, so that would allow, for example, uh, example.com to be hosted at matrix.example.com. Um, what, and what I mean by that is that the actual synapse is hosted at example.com, uh, but the server name you give it is uh, is example.com, um, because it's something I, I kind of forgot to mention, like why uh, the server name needs to be a valid DNS uh, name. It's because uh, your <clears throat> it's because your um, well the other servers are going to use that name. To, to, to try to reach your, your home server. Um, delegation can also allow the federation port to be something else than the default one. Uh, so for example, so the default one, as I mentioned, is, for, is 8448, but you could change it to be uh, 443 and basically have both uh, client API and federation API on the same port, uh, which might be easy in terms of, uh, in terms of routing and, and whatnot. Um, there are a couple of methods to do to do that. Um, the, the the most recommended one is uh, just setting up a, a JSON file at a well-known URI uh, on the delegating domain. So in our, in our example, the delegating domain would be example.com. So an example of that is that on example.com uh, forward slash well-known forward slash matrix forward slash server, uh, you've got that uh, JSON file uh, that's being served with m.server, which contains the address, uh, the, the hostname and port of the, uh, of the home server. So that would, example, uh, that would allow um, fed, uh, home servers federated, uh, federating with example.com to uh, send their traffic through um, matrix.example.com uh, on port 443 instead of example.com on port uh, 8448. Um, a couple other features that you might want to, to look into, uh, you've got turn, uh, so setting up ter a turn server is, uh, well, it's turn slash turn server is, uh, what is something that could be very useful if you want to do void behind the NAT. Um, and, uh, and we've got some uh, kind of so and Synapse uh, somewhat support well supports turn servers in that you can give it a turn server that it can then provide to clients. Uh, and another useful thing to have is uh, metrics and monitoring on your on your Synapse uh, with Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, you've got a, a whole lot of info here, and we also provide the JSON for a Grafana dashboard that you can use. And that's it for me. Uh, thank you for listening to uh, thank you for listening to me uh, rambling uh, about matrix and servers. And if you've got questions, I should be there in the Q and A. Thank you very much. Hey everybody. Uh, so first of all, Brenton, thank you for your very nice talk. Uh, my name is Jonas or Diamonos as a Nick, and we've got a couple of questions. So first question concerns the future of uh, Matrix. So the question is, uh, when will Dendrite, this uh, next generation home server, you've been talking about be ready? So uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Been a very long time user of Ashenix, and it's just a, uh, a great pleasure to, to, to be here. Um, about Dendrite, it's actually quite uh, nice timing because just last week, I think it was on last Thursday, so two, two days ago, we 
literally released the first uh, beta release of, of Dendrite. So if you want to to spin one up and um, and, and test it, it's definitely uh, it's definitely the time. It's not production ready yet, but it should be usable uh, and modular some uh, bugs and features. But hopefully, there's not too too many of the, uh, too many of those. Awesome. Uh, next question is: Are uh, identities portable yet? So, can you move your identity from one home server to another one? Uh, not yet, but it's something we really want to do, uh, and um, it's definitely it's definitely on the roadmap. I don't have a specific timeline for that. Uh, I know that we've we've got at least one uh, spec proposal uh, open for discussion on that, and uh, and I think uh, the Android team has started to do some. Uh, uh, experimental implementations of those. Uh, so it should arrive soonish, I, I think, uh, but I don't have any uh, exact, uh, any precise uh, ti uh, time scale to, to give you. Cool. Um, the next two questions are a bit similar, so I'm going to group them together. So the first question is, um, how do you think the packaging in first step uh, after installation of the net can be improved? And the second probably related question is how would a best practices installation differ from the demo you showed in uh, in the so, talk so there are a few a few things that I didn't do in the in the demo um, uh, e either by lack of time or one of them I, I think I just forgot to mention it um, in that so one thing very important in that demo I at some point uh, set a, a schmo to 777 on the on one directory, that's because the package by default sets that to uh, seven zero zeros, uh, and you can't re and you can't just sudo uh, su into an, uh, into the Synapse user. So you have to do that in order to access that directory to cd into it. But obviously, afterwards you should revert that uh, schmo to uh, seven zero zero, or depending on on your on your security policy for your system um, another thing is as i as i mentioned uh, uh, as early as possible in the process uh, stop using sqlite and uh, as the database backend and switch to uh, switch to postgresql um, because like because just it gives much much better performances for for uh, well for usage with Something like Synapse, um, and um, if you, if you're if you're already using a server that's federated, that's being in use, and all that, that's using uh, SQLite, uh, you should check out on the Synapse repo. We've got um, a migration script uh, that uh, works pretty well, um, and um, I think that's uh, about. And obviously, you should kind of I'm kind of reiterating here. Uh, be very mindful about um, whether you. Uh, whether you really want to open your um, your home server to public registration, uh, I think in terms of packaging, uh, I don't really uh, know myself. I, I haven't been involved in packaging, especially for Arch Linux, uh, and um, I, I don't really, uh, and especially as someone who who's kind of very familiar with Synapse, obviously, I don't really have uh, any uh, any improvement ideas but that's probably something we can uh but i'm definitely happy to discuss that uh, offline uh well after, uh, uh async on uh, after that after that um q a session uh with people interested cool um next questions uh concern the database so first question and uh uh, again, group these together because I think they are related. Uh, is matrix tested with alternative Postgres implementations like CockroachDB or YugaByteDB? And the other question is, could you uh, also use a no SQL database instead? Um, so currently, uh, Snap supports only um, SQLite and Postgres, and we would so we would actually want to to switch to. To move towards a world where we mainly slash only support uh, PostgreSQL, um, the uh, I the, the reason the reason for that is because supporting multiple um, multiple database engines actually uh, creates a big maintenance overhead in terms of maintaining the software, um, and um, 
the reason we chose PostgreSQL is because it's, it's the best compromise in terms of popularity, usability, uh, performances, and so on. So in, in the so we we haven't tested um, as far as I know we haven't tested Synapse with other uh, SQL uh, engines, and we've uh, and we don't have any plans for implemented uh, other other database engine both SQL or NoSQL. Okay, um, time for perhaps one last question. Uh, yeah. What's the current state of the Matrix App Service IRC? Um, I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's it, it is it is working. We the we've got some we've had some issues in the past with um, in terms of permanent of performances uh, when bridging to massive networks such as Freenode um, because uh, just the, the rate of events um, uh, was um, uh, was uh, kind of slowing down some some servers um we're trying to uh we're trying to reduce that to to reduce that uh that performance impact uh on the bridge that we host uh, well uh so that the bridge that we host on matrix.org and the bridge that other people host can work better uh though it's it's also good to be mindful of the fact that uh it only those performance issues only impact big bridges so for example if you're bridging to the whole of freenode you're going to have those issues but if you're uh if you're if you don't have um if you want to set it up for a more personal usage or more small community usage it's, it works perfectly perfectly fine cool uh so thanks again for your talk and for answering all these questions and uh see you all uh at the rest of the conference yeah thanks for having me bye bye bye